So the abdominal wall is essentially everything that keeps your, your viscera in, quite simply. And most of it is muscles, and some of it is the lumbar vertebra. Um, and I'll come on to why this is relevant clinically. Talking about the anterolateral abdominal wall first, um, I think the first thing to get your head around is the muscles. So you have to think in terms of laterally and medially. So laterally, the first one that we have is the external oblique. Um, medially, we have internal oblique. So external oblique is fingers in pockets, going very medially, and internal oblique is perpendicular to that and just deep to it. And then transversus abdominis, um, which is blowed up those two and just kind of goes transversely. Medially, we have the rectus abdominis, which is a strap muscle um, that goes from superior to inferior. And we have the rectus sheath. Um, and I'll come on to what the rectus sheath is later. So the, the layers of the anterolateral abdominal wall are quite important um, to know in terms of anatomy. So you may well find yourself in surgery, and the um, surgeons often will end up grilling you on something like this. So the first layer is obviously the skin. Underneath that, we have fascia. There are two types of fascia. There's the fatty layer, which is on top, and that's also called campus fascia. And then below that, we have a membranous layer. Going over the muscles again, we have separate groups laterally and medially. And the transversalis fascia is under all the muscles. So this is medial and lateral, and it's just a layer of fascia just underneath the muscles. Underneath that, we have some fat that is outside of the peritoneum, but still within kind of the abdominal cavity. That's lined by parietal peritoneum, and then we also have visceral peritoneum just on top of the viscera. So rectus sheath is this white bit that we can see just here, and it covers the rectus abdominis. And it's an aponeurosis um, of the three flat muscles that comes together to cover the rectus. It's split by the arcuate line, and you might remember learning about this. Um, and essentially, this is a point, and I'll come on to what exactly the definition is. But above this point, the rectus sheath covers the front and the back of the muscle, so the rectus abdominis muscle. Um, but below the arcuate line, it's um, only covering the front. And on the back, you go straight onto the transversalis fascia. In terms of where it is, it's the midpoint of the umbilicus here to the pubic tubercle back there. And anatomically, it's actually the reason why they chose that point um, might seem a bit arbitrary, but it's defined as being where the inferior epigastric vessels perforate the re rectus abdominis muscle. Um, and you can see that here, so that's just there. Inferiorly, because there's no aponeurosis here, there's a risk of direct hernias. So a direct hernia is where you have a protrusion coming straight through the abdominal wall whereas the indirect hernia is where it comes through the inguinal canal, um, and that usually is bowel. And because there's less support inferiorly, it's more likely that you'll get a direct hernia. The other thing that can happen is occult hemorrhage. So patients, for example, if they've got a bleed in their inferior epigastric vessels, can bleed quite significantly, and you won't, um, or clinicians won't recognise it until the patient is really quite unwell because they won't get as much pain as they would if it was within the correct constraints of the fascia above. So the posterior abdominal wall is quite simple. It's only made up of five muscles. The first is the diaphragm, which is also kind of the superior border of the abdominal cavity. The psoas major, which is this quite long muscle here, um, and that comes from your vertebrae um, all the way down to your leg. The psoas minor, again, is a similar quite long muscle. It's a bit thinner. Um, quadratus lumborum is quite a broad muscle that makes up your back. And iliacus is a muscle um, that attaches from the iliac crest, again, onto your leg. And it actually fuses with um, psoas um, major to become iliopsoas um, as it inserts.